Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be looking at linear inequalities in one variable, so examples with fractions and decimals. So to be more precise, this is exactly what we're going to be going through these four problems. So you can pause and read them over. If you want to try them out, you can pause the video here, give it a go. If there's a certain one you want to see, you can just fast forward to it. And just as a note, so for these problems, we're going to put our final answer on a number line and in interval notation. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So starting here with A, so I'm actually going to drop a link to my video where I talk about how to clear fractions and then also how to clear decimals since that's basically what I'm doing in, in this whole video. So in case you need a refresher, you can, you can go and watch that. So the whole idea here is that you want to multiply everything by the LCD of all fractions and the LCD of all fractions in this case would be 15. So what I want to do is I want to set this up where I'm multiplying everything in the problem by 15. So I'm just setting that up like this. So got that and then this last one. So 15 times 2 fifths x. And so the strategy here then is to just really divide each denominator into 15. So as we go through this, 3 goes into 15 five times, and then I'm going to multiply this together. So five times one X, that's what I'm left with. So five times one X will leave me with five X. And then continuing on the line, five goes into 15 three times. And then if I do three times one, that'll give me three. And now I go to the other side of the problem. So three goes into 15, oops, I should have used pink. Three goes into 15 five times. 5 times 1 will give me 5, and then 5 goes into 15 3 times. So if I do 3 times 2x, that'll give me 6x, so plus 6x. And now I'm good to go on this, so I can just go ahead and, and finish solving as usual. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract off the 6x, then I'm left with negative x minus 3 is less than or equal to 5. Then I can add 3 to each side, so I've got negative x is less than or equal to 8. And then to finish getting x by itself, I divide both sides by negative 1. Now, when you divide by a negative number, you have to flip the direction of your inequality. So the answer here then is going to be x is greater than or equal to negative 8. And so then I can put this on a number line. So here's negative 8. So where is it going to be greater than, to the left or to the right? So that's going to be to the right. And then I can use either a closed dot or a square bracket. And then for my interval notation, so I start at negative 8 and I continue on to positive infinity. So if this notation is not familiar to you and you're looking for a bigger breakdown about this, I have an entire video where I just talk about number lines and interval notation. So I will also drop a link to that in the description of this video. Okay, so this one is a decimal problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the technique, but if you could use a refresher, there will be a link to that in the description. So the idea behind this is that you're just looking for what is the maximum number of decimal spots that you see. So two in this case. So I'm going to move all of the decimals two spots over. So move this over two, I'm going to move this over two, and move this over two. So then this becomes 3x plus 20 is greater than two. And then I can subtract off the 20, so I can, I can just really solve as usual now. So now this is 3x is greater than negative 18. Divide both sides by 3. Now I'm dividing by a positive number. So as long as I'm dividing by a positive number, I don't have to flip the direction of the inequality. So this is x is greater than negative 6. So if I put that on the number line, here's negative 6. Here's the greater than direction. And I can either use a round bracket or an open circle, your choice. And then for the interval notation, I start at negative 6, but I don't include negative 6, so I use a round bracket. And then that's going off into the positive infinity direction. Okay, so for this one, so you might remember, the whole idea here is to, one, find the LCD of all fractions. So we'll just note over here that the LCD is 20. And then the thing to remember with this is that you only want to multiply this by kind of each term, or I've called it in other videos, like each part. So this is a part. So these two things that are connected here by multiplication, that's one part. This is a second part and this is a third part. So I really only have to multiply that 20 um, three times. So if I set this up, 
So I'm just going to multiply the front fraction by 20. And again, I break that all down in my other video. So if you're looking for kind of a re refresher on that, you can kind of skip to the second half of that, that video. Okay, so I'm setting everything up to multiply by 20. And now I can go ahead and do my cancellations. So five goes into 20 four times. And then I just worry about what's in front of the parentheses right now. So four times three is 12. So this becomes 12 times two X minus one. Now, once I distribute, like all that work will kind of get, like the work I'm doing here will ultimately get captured in the parentheses. If you were to multiply 20 inside the parentheses, you're double multiplying, so you don't want to do that. Okay, so continuing on, so four goes into 20 five times, and then five times three is 15. So this will be minus 15 and then two minus three X. And then finally, 10 goes into 20 two times. So two times one, is two and then I've got four minus three X. And now I've cleared the fractions so I can just press ahead with the problem now and distribute. So as I distribute, this becomes 24 X minus 12. Now be careful with the next one. This is a minus 15, so make sure you capture that minus. So this becomes minus 30 plus 45 X and this is less than eight minus six X. Okay, so Continuing on, so it looks like this is going to become, let's see, 69x minus 42 is less than 8 minus 6x. And then, let's see, I'll go ahead and add the 6x to this side, so the 6x here. So now I've got 75x minus 42 is less than 8. So now I'll go ahead and add the 42 to each side. So I've got X is, oops, sorry, 75 X, 75 X, 75 X is less than 50. So this time my answer will actually end up being a fraction. So 50 over 75 will simplify to two thirds. So there's my, my answer. So I still have to put this on the number line and in interval notation, so let me clear some space. So just to finish this, here's my number line. So here's my two thirds. So my less than direction is this way. And so then I can do either the open circle or the uh, round bracket, your choice. And then this starts at negative infinity and it goes to two thirds. So there you go. Now for the last one. So same idea here with kind of clearing your decimals and, and still cut with that idea of working with parts. So this would be a part, this would be a part, and this would be a part. So I just noticed the maximum number of decimal spots, which in this case would once again be two. So I'm gonna move all of these decimals over two spots like this. And I just worry about that in front of the parentheses. So this becomes 20 times two X minus four plus three times six minus 10 X. And then this will be six times X plus nine. And so now that we've cleared the decimals, we can just push forward with the problem. So this will be 40 X minus 80 plus 18 minus 30 X is greater than or equal to six X plus 54. So now we can go ahead and collect our like terms on the left side. So I've got 40 minus 30 X is 10 X. And then negative 80 plus 18 is negative 62. And okay, so then that's 6x plus 54. So let's see, let's subtract off the 6x. So now I've got 4x minus 62 is greater than or equal to 54. And then I'll add 62, 62 to both sides. So now I've got 4x. 4x, if I could write, let's write it over here. 4x is greater than or equal to 116, which if I divide both sides by four, I'll get 29. Okay, so let's see, can I cram in the number line here? I'll cram it in right over here. So here's 
Here's my 29. So my greater than direction will be right here. I can use either a closed dot or a square bracket. And then my interval notation starts at 29 and goes on to positive infinity, which in infinity always gets the round bracket. And so that'll cover this set of examples. If you guys have any questions or you want to see more, you can always leave me a comment and I'll make more. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you.